the Wounded Child, aka SCP-2468. Item SCP-2468, object class Keter. Special containment procedures, as in, as SCP-2468 relocates at random intervals, it is impossible to fully contain the phenomenon. Should SCP-2468 relocate, the surrounding area must be locked down and quarantined by a containment team with cover stores given to end the likely case of civilian activity around it. Once lockdown has been achieved, in order to maximize SCP-2468's time within the locked zone, a minimal mass of roughly 55 kilograms of raw flesh, fresh meat will be brought to 2468's area of effect once a week, starting from day one of, lo of locating. The disappearance of 2468 must be reported immediately. Description 2468 is an entity resembling a human child, with all reported cases appearing to be at the ages of 9 to 10 years. Anthony's appearance changes periodically, although it, is, it always bears wounds to various sources. Strangulation, blood cranial trauma, and bruises of varying severity appear to be more common in others. 2468 tends to appear in populated, populated yet open areas, including urban parks and town squares. The entity has shown a tendency to revisit places which have resulted in a successful yield. 2468's behavior is consistent across all instances. The entity lies on the floor in a fetal position and requests help in various languages. Recorded languages include English, Spanish, Russian, Swahili, Hebrew, and German, depending on its current location. Upon reaching a distance of 35 centimeters from 2468, organic objects are lifted by an unknown force to a height of approximately 2 meters and dematerialize completely, along with 2468. The entity returns to the area after roughly two minutes. In the time between 2468's disappearance and its return, no anomalous qualities are found in the area it is located in. Testing has shown that 2468 disables all electronic devices, including GPS trackers and wireless cameras. Retrieved electronics have shown signs of water damage even in waterproof objects. 2468 has been responsible for the disappearances of 16 individuals so far, and of those four have returned. All four subjects have reported to have a mass of roughly 55 kilo kilograms or less prior to disappearance. All subjects were found in a catatonic state, and two expired prior to questioning. Although seemingly intended to capture humans, 2468 will accept any type of, type of meat with a mass above 55 ki kilograms. Raw and fresh meat have been proven to contain an anomaly in the area it's been found, and longer than frozen, cooked, or expired meat. Inorganic objects not in contact with organic objects are not affected by 2468. 2468 was first sighted by the Foundation during a series of disappearances in Redacted in the town of Redacted, New York. The case was brought to the Foundation's attention when Redacted, a homeless, homeless woman, seemingly disappeared in front of several witnesses after approaching a child. Redacted was later found catatonic at the town's part. part. The Foundation interrogated the subject before administering Class B amnestics to her and all witnesses and initiating lockdown on 2468's surroundings in order to contain and begin research. Since its discovery, 2468 has moved 35 times and is currently located in Redacted, Ohio. Interview D-2468-6 Interview Interviewer Dr. Dr. Sanford Forward D-2468-6 is the first D personnel in Dr. Nugent's line of experiments with SCD-2468 to survive long enough for an interview. Begin log. Dr. Sanford, what happened after you got close to SCP-2468? D-2468-6? I, I, I can't really describe that. Ain't nothing like anything that ever happened to me. Could you please try? Subject looks around and sighs loudly. I like that. I'm trying. I feel, it felt like I fell up. Felt like Skylabin, you know? Except this time I was giving up and said, Sat down. For a few seconds, I just, I just felt up. 
It stuck its head, and then I suddenly... It fell into the pool of your onion's stomach. That's what happened. You fell into a pool of water. It's... It, put off, it wasn't water. It didn't feel like water. Something about it was playing around. That's when I noticed a fishing hook between my teeth. A fishing hook? Yeah. Those corking metal things you put on fishing rod. Only a hell lot bigger and larger my cheek. We didn't find any wounds on your person. <coughs> Sorry about that. I, I know, but I was there. Lord knows it was. I believe you. Continue. What happened when you fell into the water? It was... I couldn't breathe. When I first tried to inhale some of the water, sweet Lord did burn all on my end. It was sort of like salt water, too. It was hot, overwhelming, and I felt like I was invaded by fucking salt. I sh tasted in my mouth, and it was up my nose and down my chest, and Cedric becomes more agitated, interview postponed, resumed at a later date. Sorry about that, Dak. It's all right. Continue what happened next. All right. Well, I, well, I start struggling with my breath before seeing them. Who the hell is them? The fuckers who held the rods. They were... There were three of them. And one was a lot bigger than the other two. They were like massive fish with legs and hands. They had orange scales all over their body, except for their legs. Those were green. They... One of them. One of the small ones. It held me close to his face. I could see his head and face. Cedric takes a deep breath. And Lloyd, what an ugly face it had. Noted. What happened then? Well, the things started shaking me around, making the most horrible noise, and showing me to the big one. He, he just looked at me for a second, and then he, and then he threw me back into the water, or air, or whatever. And that's what we found you. Yeah, next thing I know, I was coughing my lungs out, and one of you guys rushes to my aid. Understood. Would that be all? I, yeah, no. He, the big one, he, it, it said something before he threw me back. What did he say? It ain't got no meat on it. End log. Question statement D-2468-6 was retained for further questioning. Very, very interesting. I will attempt to make contact with these entities. Dr. Nugent. Addendum 2468-2. Following an interview with D-2468-6, after getting approval of the security chief redacted, Dr. Nugent began to Etching stainless steel plates with messages expressing benevolence and entrance and communication engraved on them to the meat supplied to 2468. All messages were rejected by 2468. After three rejected messages, the entity relocated to its current position. Dr. Nugent was forbidden from sending more messages this way. Alright, that's it. Let's see. What's the thumbnail like? I, boy, not only did I include almost naked woman, but blood and gore. Okay, well that was easy. Alright, let's continue on the last video. Grab her! Chen launched himself into the air, reaching for the woman as she flew up in into the sky. Just as his hand what? was inches away from hers, she vanished. Startled, Chen tumbled through the air and gazed downwards at the child. He was going to crush her as he came down. He tried to reposition his body to minimize the injuries he would cause her. As he put out his hands to brace the impact, she vanished before his eyes. He crashed into the ground. He was all alone. They were both gone. Are you okay? Am I okay? Does it matter? Of course I'm okay. How about asking about that lady who just vanished into thin air? Or how about that little girl that just disappeared? Klaus looked at Chen without saying a word. Are you done? I'm not ah. done until we find that little girl. This is the third sighting of her today and no trace of what's going on. Behind Chen's head, the skies opened and a body fell from the sky crashing into the ground, hard. Chen and Klaus ran over to the body. What? It was the woman who had just disappeared. Her body was mangled and broken. 
possibly I... from the impact, or possibly from something else. Okay. Her neck looked broken, and a large puncture had torn her cheek open. I... Kloss bent down. It was stated they would not find the fucking cheek being torn open, or there being a hook. And pressed okay. his fingers to her carotid artery. Nothing. She was dead. He looked back at Chen and shook his head. Wrap it up. We're done here. Amnestics Class B. Let's get out of here. Welcome back. Today I bring you SCP-2468, Wounded Child. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So, what do we know about this thing? It's seriously Dark Souls right there. Not a whole lot, really. An injured child turns up asking for help. Usually, lacerations around the throat and bruising to the body. I'm gonna double check. Sorry, that's prior to disappearance. So I gotta see two birds by see I see catch human seeds, blah blah blah. It's worse than a child, it was there in the tongue child's fight. It just says that they're catatonic or knocked out. Nothing about fucking damages to their body. It's even stated. Okay, so they did go up. So that was true. Yeah, there's no wounds on their person. Meaning no wounds would be on the people. The moment someone gets close enough to help, they float up into the air and vanish, just as the child does the same. Why is but there an almost naked person with chin? The person who tries to help rematerializes. Yes, but so far, none have survived long enough to tell us anything. So, we need to somehow keep the helper alive long enough to get some answers. Well, yes, that's the obvious approach. That sounds like another way of saying, Of course, Chen, you're missing the point again. Not quite, but close. How about capturing the child? Damn it. Chen hit the table and walked off, Kloss smirking behind him. The van moved along at high speed, Kloss oh and Chen God. and the agents at the ready. The child appeared in the subway, laying on the ground, injured and calling out for help. The usual MO. Got it. Remember, the child is the target, not the helper. A crowd had gathered around the child. MTF agents had formed a cordon to prevent anyone approaching. As Kloss and Chen approached, they saw a lady screaming at the agents to let her through, to help the child. As they reached My the cordon, God. the woman broke through and ran towards the child. Chen reacted instinctively and ran towards her, Kloss yelling behind him to stop. As the woman reached for the child, her body was pulled up a few meters into the air. Chen slid forward towards her, but grabbed the child, ignoring the woman. The child's body pulled up into the air, Chen moving up with it. What? From the side, an MTF agent grabbed onto Chen's foot, arresting his ascent upwards. For a moment, he just dangled in the air, hanging off the child. Then, the child's neck broke, and they fell to the ground. What do you make of it? Dead. Brilliant, Doc. Absolutely brilliant. What was your first clue? The broken neck or the lack of a pulse? You know, Chen, every time you do this, and every time I have to put you in your place, that child was dead long before we got to the subway. It's being manipulated by some unknown force. For what reason? To capture other humans, seemingly. But why? I don't know. Sounds like it's high time we found out. My thoughts exactly. The latest right. sighting had been in Ohio. Okay. They'd be there soon. Remember. I don't think don't it ever the hero. That the talked about the child being dead. Yeah, no, it doesn't talk about the child being dead. It's for all we know, the child is most likely alive. The tracking device and cameras do their job. Chen nodded his head. The child laid on the embankment by the river, a bridge passing overhead. The agents prepared the D-class, 
cameras, microphones, GPS trackers, the lot. Okay, you understand what to do? The D-Class nodded his head. Okay, let's proceed. He slowly walked towards the child. As he stood over the child, his body suddenly jerked up into the air. But instead of disappearing, it came back down. He was suspended, feet above the ground, calling out for help. His body jerking up and down, what? gently. It's not taking the bait, Chen yelled out as he ran towards the D-Class. He closed his arms around the D-Class's body, suspended in the air. As soon as his grip closed, the D-Class's body jerked slightly upwards, then violently jerked hard into the air, what? and both men disappeared, along with the child. Chen held on tight. He was flying upwards. It was dark, but he could see something move above him. It looked like water. He closed his eyes as he broke through the barrier and was hoisted into blackness. He had gone through into some liquid, but upwards. He looked up. The D-Class was either dead or unconscious, but there was a rope or line coming out of his head. Chen adjusted his eyes and looked forward. In front of him was some creature. He was in some sort of eldritch horror. The creature before him resembled a fish, but from the deepest, darkest nightmare of Lovecraft himself. It had feet and arms and... A fishing rod? It pulled him towards its face, its enormous eyes focusing on him. Closer now, Chen was almost in its mouth. It sniffed him once, then again, and pulled back in disgust. It released the line, and suddenly Chen was falling again, through the water, and back into air. They're he missing a part of it. Under the bridge, on the embankment, back in Ohio. Kloss rushed to his side. Are you okay? What happened? What was it? Chen looked Kloss in the face, and mumbled out the words, Doesn't like Chinese food. <laughs> and with that, he passed out. Oh, okay, racism, got it. As SCP-2468 relocates at random intervals, it is impossible to fully contain the phenomenon. Should SCP-2468 relocate, the surrounding area must be locked down and quarantined by a containment team, with cover stories given in the likely case of civilian activity around it. Once lockdown has been achieved, in order to maximize SCP-2468's time within the locked zone, a minimal mass of roughly 55 kilograms of raw, Fresh meat will be brought to SCP-2468's area of effect once a week, starting from day one of locating. Disappearance of SCP-2468 must be reported immediately. SCP-2468 is an entity resembling a human child, with all reported cases appearing to be at the age of 9 to 10 years. Uh -huh, that's correct. The entity's appearance changes aperiodically, although it always bears wounds of various sources. Strangulation, blunt cranial trauma, and bruises of varying severity appear to be more common than others. SCP-2468 tends to appear in populated yet open areas, including urban parks and town squares. The entity has shown a tendency to revisit places which have resulted in a successful yield. SCP-2468's behavior is consistent across all instances. The entity lies on the floor in a fetal position and requests help in various languages. Recorded mm -hmm. languages include English, Spanish, Russian, Swahili, Hebrew, and German, depending yep. on its current location. Upon reaching a distance of 35 centimeters from SCP-2468, organic objects are lifted by an unknown force to a height of approximately 2 meters and dematerialize completely along with SCP-2468. The entity returns to the area after roughly 2 minutes. In the time between SCP-2468's disappearance and its return, no anomalous qualities are found in the area it is located in. Testing has shown that SCP-2468 disables all electronic devices, including GPS trackers and wireless cameras. Retrieved electronics have shown oh signs of water damage, even in waterproof objects. SCP-2468 has been responsible for the disappearance of 16 individuals so far. Out of those, four have returned. All four subjects were reported to have a mass of roughly 55 kilograms or less prior to disappearance. All subjects were found in a catatonic state and two expired prior to questioning. Although seemingly intended to capture humans, 
SCP-2468 will accept any type of meat with a mass above 55 kilograms. Raw and fresh meat has been proven to contain the anomaly in the area it's been found in longer than frozen, cooked, or expired meat. Inorganic objects not in contact with organic objects are not affected by SCP-2468. Fishing is an age-old tradition, not only a means of survival, but also a way to reconnect with nature and simply have a good time. Of course, that all depends if you're the fisherman or the bait. As always. Oh my god. Alright, removal of characters or license. Let me see. They didn't say the D class, so that's one person. Dr. Stanford, that's another. As well as Dr. Nugent, that's another. Did they actually get rid of all of them? And security chief. Yeah, they got rid of all characters. So three. What did they call her violence? Hmm. Something move above him. I don't mean to do that. Eh. Not really. That much. They did add some because you wouldn't notice this shit. I. Because hmm. so, I did that with every body. There would be no visible damages on the bodies, and every single time one came back. In the video, they had damages. I'll, I'll just say three for that, because they, they, they were rather bloody. Deviates from the plot of the article. Hmm. I would have to say a bit, but not that much. Like, they didn't do the interview right here. So that's one chunk gone. Or the important interview about sending messages. That's also gone. So that's literally right under the description. They just disregarded all of it. As well as they didn't say where it was. Like, it's literally clearly right here. Damn, seven hour stream. Yep. So, they did leave a massive chunk. I have to go with, with a three. It's not a four, because they did include a lot of important shit. If you write SP5240. No, I haven't. This isn't, it's not this type, that type of stream. And it'll have to be a zero, because they didn't get rid of any female characters, because there were no female characters. Alright. Alright. So 15 times 16 equals 65. So that would leave it at 35%. And that's the last one of the night.